Let's worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the We praise you. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teachings of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even through tested, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although, although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an undescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith and the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said that to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord.
I don't know about you, but I, I can't seem to remember what week of quarantine we're in. Are we on week three, week four, week five? As I can imagine, I feel like many of us are probably a little stir crazy. Some of us are sick of our spouses. Some of us are sick of our kids. Some of us are sick of the walls that we look at every single day. And maybe we're just even sick of ourselves. I remember I went to go pick up food about, about two weeks ago. And I remember this man was going to, to get food himself. And this other man was also there too, probably because he wanted to leave the house. And this man said, hey, how's it going? And then the man just said, I don't know. I love my kids. I love my wife, but I just can't be at home. And I know for a lot of us, that's kind of one of the unfortunate things that we're struggling with is, is being stir crazy. But I also see something also that's going on, and it's our deep desire for relationships. You see, I think for many of us, we maybe we're a little tired of our own families, but we miss our grandparents. We miss those people that we cannot see. We miss our friends. And online, I remember seeing this, this image of, of these grandchildren that went to, to visit their grandparents. And the grandparents were inside the home, and there was just a window there. And then you could just see both their hands just touching. You see, deep down, we know as people, we are made for relationships, that we are made to, to be with those people that we love. And I tell you all of this to give you a sense of context in what we're looking at in this gospel. You see, a lot of times, I think, when we, when we think about these disciples, we think that maybe they had it all together. Maybe they knew exactly what Jesus would do and that they would be okay. You see, I want to fast forward. The day when, when Jesus died, these disciples were terrified. They were anxious, they were scared, they were frightened, they were fearful. But I want to fast forward to this gospel here. You see, this is one of the first times that our Lord Jesus Christ appears to his disciples. Can you imagine the joy that they had? Their dearest friend, the one that they spend every day with, he died, he disappeared, and now that he appears to them and tells them they're okay. Do you recall the words that Jesus tells his disciples? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. You see, Jesus' disciples abandoned him in that final hour. So as you can imagine, these disciples were hiding out because they were afraid that they too would die, but they're also afraid and sad at what they did to Jesus Christ. Jesus does not come to them and say, you did this. He says, peace be with you. I love you, I love you, I love you. And notice also what Jesus does. Jesus shows them his hands and his side to show them that he is alive, that he is risen. Last Sunday, Father Dewey spoke about the empty tomb. That being unempty is not a bad thing. Today we celebrate that the Lord is not just in the empty tomb, but that he has risen. And I know for you and for me, we are desperate in, in seeking the Lord that is risen. You see, Jesus knew that his disciples needed to see his hands and his side, to know that he is the risen Lord. You see, this also gives us something. You see, to say that we are an Easter people, I've been saying that a lot. To say that we are an Easter people doesn't just mean that Jesus died for us and that we're going to go to heaven. That's the obvious part. But that we too will be raised with our hands and our sides and our bodies. You see, when the disciples saw Jesus risen, they thought about themselves as well, and they said, we too will rise with him. But we know in the story about Thomas. Thomas wasn't there in the room. Thomas didn't see what the disciples said, and when the disciples told Thomas what was going on, Thomas didn't believe them. And I know for you and for me, we can be like Thomas. I think it's easy, especially during this time, that we're celebrating Easter, and yet it seems 
that it's hard to celebrate the risen Lord with everything that's happening. But in the gospel, Thomas doesn't believe. And Jesus goes to Thomas and says, put your, put your hands on my, on my hands and put your hands on my side and believe. Because I have risen. You see, I know for many of us, we want that tangible proof. We want that evidence that God is risen, that God is alive. But when we look at our world, we look at the goodness that is there, I believe there is still goodness in this world. Our yearning for God. We look at examples of, of the disciples. We know that he has risen. You see, to be an Easter people is to believe that, that not just the tomb is empty, but that our Lord, our Lord, his body is not just, you see, a lot of times I think when, when, when we think about when, when Jesus raised up Lazarus, you know, we think that it's like that. When Jesus raised up Lazarus, he raised him up in an earthly way. When Jesus appears to his disciples, he comes in his glorified form. That's why he can pass through walls. You see, we are destined heirs and heiresses to that promise that God has given us. But I know it's hard. You see, every single Sunday after Easter, we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. And of all the times our church wanted this day to be Divine Mercy Sunday to remind us what God desires for all humanity. You see, St. John Paul II was the Pope that instituted this day. And a long, long time ago, people had trouble believing that God was merciful. People were afraid of God. They were afraid that he was going to send lightning upon them. That God, they believed that God was more judge than mercy. Today we celebrate a God that desires to restore our relationships. And it's obvious that it's hard. Because I know that many of you are, are desperate to come to your churches. To come to celebrate. There's a divine mercy image where it says, Jesus, I trust in you. And Jesus is standing with hands like this, and there, and there are two rays. You see, these rays represent the pledge of God's love. That people have said that, that the red represents the blood that Jesus poured for us, and the water represents the life-giving waters of baptism. And Jesus says that all those who look at this image will receive my grace and my mercy. You see, when we think about mercy... Mercy was never, mercy is never about just doing whatever we want. Mercy for God is, is to change, to respond to the God who loves us, the God who gave everything for us. So I look at you all now, and I'm going to say it again. It is a time to lean on God. It is a time to be right with God, but today it is a time to seek God's mercy so when you look at this image today, the image of divine mercy, say the words, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Have courage. Have faith. Because our Lord is indeed risen. And we are the Alleluia people. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, 
he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, at this moment, we gather all up, we gather all our intentions, and we ask you to hear us because of what Jesus has done on the cross. For the church, that as the body of the risen Christ here on earth, God's Holy Spirit may guide us in proclaiming the truth and hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace and justice in the world, may Easter grace be with all nations and peoples, in turning away from division, let us pray to the Lord. For those who struggle each day to make ends meet, may God grant them a spirit of fortitude, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they share with the saints the reward of eternal joy, let us pray to the Lord. For health workers, doctors, nurses, and caretakers, may God protect them and give them strength and rest during this time. Let us pray to the Lord. And for the gift of healing, comfort, and peace, and an end to this pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we gather all these intentions now, and we ask you to hear these prayers because of what Jesus has done, that he died and that he rose. We ask this in your son's name, amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. As they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body of and blood, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. O Lord, until Yeah. 
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of a reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased confirm in the faith and charity of Pilgrim Church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, assistant bishops, Timothy and Ton, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. Dare we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and foreign but divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. At this moment, let us pray the spiritual communion prayer together.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. With all of my heart, with all of my strength, with all that I have, I will sing with everything that has breath praise the Lord. Straight from your heart Canyons of mercy so deep I could never depart Father, your wonders are endless Open my eyes to believe Awake my soul We sing, let everything Let everything that has breath Hello, thank you for joining us for Divine Mercy Sunday and being a part of our family. I would like to also thank you for your continued support financially to our mission, the mission to help those in need and to bring you faith-filled content. I would like to invite you to join us today at 3 p.m. on Facebook as we pray our Divine Mercy Chaplain. So come join us, be a part of our family again. I hope to see you soon, God bless. Thank you.